Hey guys, my name is Boris. I'm a physician assistant. And for today's pre-PA Q&A, where I answer uh, pre-physician assistant questions from pre-physician assistant students, I'm going to review this post in a uh, pre-physician assistant Reddit group, which when I was uh, you know, applying to PA school, I found a lot of comfort and a lot of answers. And because a lot of people, it's like a community, you know, uh, what is it, like 200, I think, PA schools in the country, maybe 100 something all of which take between like 15 and maybe 50 students uh, per class. I think some are bigger, like my student, uh, my class takes 75, I think. My school takes about 75 per year, but a lot of those are three plus two programs, so they legitimately only have like 50 spots available every year. So my point is, extremely competitive, lots more people are trying to apply and trying to get in than actually do get in. So there is this big pre-PA community out there on Reddit, on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, you know, on YouTube and all of that, you guys are probably part of it if you're watching this video. But anyway, so uh, I kind of like this group, the pre-physician assistant group on Reddit, and uh, I definitely found a lot of help in it when I was a pre-physician assistant student. So let me just, uh, without further ado, uh, let me just read this question. So the topic is accepted, low GPA. And uh, <laughs> this person's obviously like very, very stoked, which I would be, absolutely. So it says, hello. I uh, cannot believe I am accepted, and they capitalize accepted. I don't know if you meant to do that, but it's cute that you did. Um, I have been a long-time lurker on this group and just wanted to motivate anyone who was on the same journey. I was really doubting myself, but hard work pays off at the end. I am so grateful for this community and so excited to finally be a PA in the future. Give back and work with patients. Smiley face. Stats. First-time applicant. Uh, SGPA, which is science GPA. 3.09. C GPA, which is cumulative GPA, non-science, but everything all together, 3.35. Patient care experience at the time of application, 4,886 hours. Um, volunteer hours, 820. Shadow hours, 120. And no GRE. Applied to 18 programs, accepted. Oh, no. Applied to 18 programs, interviewed at three, accepted at one, waitlisted at one. Rejections, eight. Not heard back, seven. Whoa. So, okay, first off, uh, a couple of things that stand out. One, they haven't heard back from seven programs. So I know it seems a little bit daunting, you know, applied to 18 programs, $120 a pop. That's a lot of money to apply, man. Uh, not to mention, you know, getting your CASPA verified and all the effort that it takes to apply to that many programs. So it sounds kind of daunting that you apply to 18 programs and you only get into one, but they have not heard back from seven. So there's a chance that, you know, they'll maybe get another two, three, four, seven interviews and get into two, three, four, five, seven of those programs. Uh, so that's always possible. Uh, so I just didn't want to discourage you with those stats. Those stats are not necessarily representative. We also don't know much more of this person's application. Also, uh, other first impressions are, I don't know if I would consider this person a low GPA applicant. In fact, yeah, no, I would not consider this person a low GPA applicant. I'd say they're lower, you know, but they're definitely not low. Uh, so like cumulative GPA of 3.35, kind of round that up to 3.4, that's pretty average. And by pretty average, I mean that's like on the lower end of people who actually do get in. That's pretty average for people applying, and that's like on the lower end of people who actually do get in. And especially with 4,800, almost 4,900 hours of PCE, uh, just by the stats alone, um, the very basic stats, this person is quite competitive. I'd say they're, you know, bottom half for sure of people who get in, but they're definitely quite competitive as far as their cumulative GPA and their uh, PCE. Their science GPA is a little weak, uh, which is kind of bringing them down, but also without having like a full breakdown of their, um, of their transcripts, there's no way for me to know if I would consider them competitive or not because these basic numbers can tell a story. Um, or these basic numbers don't tell the whole story. I don't know how many actual hard science courses they've taken. I don't know how well they did in those kinds of uh, science courses. I don't know how many of these are from retakes. I don't know if any of this is post back. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of things that go into evaluating an application that's not just these basic numbers. But by these basic numbers, I'm gonna say that this person is actually not really a low GPA candidate uh, or a low GPA applicant. Uh, I'd say they're actually quite average. If somebody had stats that were like, you know, science GPA 2.9, cumulative GPA like 3.0 or 3.1 or whatever, I'd consider them kind of a lower GPA applicant. So 
yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about this one particular post. I'm pretty sure that it's going to give some people some value just uh, from my experience of reviewing hundreds of these applications at this point. So, um, and just seeing the kind of people that get in and the kind of people that do not. So hopefully that was valuable to you guys, just dissecting some of these hard numbers. But anyway, uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next pre-PA Q&A. Get your questions in either on YouTube, you know, just comment on this video, send me an email, send me a message on Instagram. Let me know what you want me to talk about. And if you want my help personally, of course, you know how to do that. BorisThePA.com for my pre-PA services. I will see you guys in the next video. Good luck to all of y'all applying to PA school.